Can this $3,700 device fix my color matching issues and give me my sanity back? Only one way to find out. Let's make t-shirts. So your DTF printing business is booming and you got your second printer. Congratulations, you are now at level two on Murphy's Playground. And one of the biggest bosses that you're gonna have to fight at this level is color matching. Let me explain. So in July of 2022, we got our second printer, which turned out to be a $17,000 lemon. We'll talk about that more on a future video because I'm not emotionally ready for that conversation. But we stuck with that printer for about a year until we finally woke up and realized that it was not gonna work for us. So in June of 2023, this year, we got the Mongoose 2 and it prints like 40-ish linear feed per hour at six paths and as hassle-free as a Chinese printer yet, which if you've watched our other videos, you'll see that these printers are as far from hassle-free as you can get. More on this in the future. Anyway, I digress. So we got the printer, got it printing real fast, but then we quickly realized that it prints darker than the Obby. And even though they have the same parts, the same print head, same boards and everything, the different companies that make them program them in different ways. And so that's where the color differences are coming from. So to fix this, we bought the Catalink NYX upgrade for about $800. And we got the NYX Mini to spectral photometer and we started calibrating the printer and even though it worked ish and we got close to the colors the mongoose still printed darker than the oddly did let me show you check this out this is from the mongoose so check out those colors and check this one out this was from the oddly these are the right colors but for some reason this was coming out darker. And here lies the problem. Imagine you have a list of clients that do repeat orders, so they order the same prints over and over again. So you'll have to make sure that the color stay the same between orders. Otherwise, they're gonna send it back and you'll have to reprint and there goes your time, your meager profits, and whatever sanity you have left. And I know this from experience because that's where we are right now. And it is a big nightmare. So we got this $3,700 thingamabob, which basically what it does is the same thing that the NYX system does, but it's supposed to be better because it's x ray which is owned by Pantone or x ray and Pantone are the same thing. And if you've been in the printing industry for a little bit, then you should know that Pantone is the standard when it comes to color matching. So today we're going to unbox it, test it out and see if it can match colors between the printers and hopefully it all works out. So let's go. Here it is. Oh my God, this thing's heavy. And we got all of this stuff here. We have the extra large slider thing for the sensor, a whole bunch of rulers. We're not gonna go through the whole thing. Check this out, Let's open that. This thing right here, this is what's going to save our sanity. That's the sensor. That's the spectral photometer, which is your light and color sensor. And it comes with a whole bunch of different stand. See there, stand bag for your monitor, calibration, USB cable, and all that good stuff. So I just downloaded the software and I am installing it right now. And once we have it, we should be able to profile it. And this is what it looks like. You can see this, you know, you can just Google i1 profiler software on Google and it's gonna show you this so I can Profile display, uh, monitor, projectors, printer, which is this is what we're aiming for. So we're gonna do these two today. And as you can see here, these are all the possible licenses that I can have, but they're all question mark because I don't have the hardware attached yet. And once I attach it, it should be able to identify which license I have. And here as well, and sliding up, and we'll see what it does. As you can see there, it found my device, iPro 3 Plus, and these are all the licenses that I have. So I can profile monitors, oh, this is projector. I can print profile in RGB, CMYK, scanners, oh, printers, desktop printers, and other scanners. So that's what we got. So we're gonna start by profiling the screen so that in theory, whatever shows up in the screen, whatever color shows up in the screen is gonna be the same as the print color. I'm gonna do that. It's gonna give me a walkthrough. Okay, select your display. That's my display. White illumination point. And then I'm gonna click on next. Okay, connect your measurement instrument to your computer. It is connected. Hi, uh, I need some help with my uh, iPro publisher. Put it out now. Okay, all right, found it. Thank you, appreciate you. In the home page, I had this at iDisplay and my product is iPro Q Plus. It was looking for the iDisplay hardware and it was saying there's no iDisplay there. So I just needed to change it to the iPro 3 and start displaying the profile and click on next. 
And now it's saying calibrate the device, which I'm gonna show you how to do that. Profile name, we're gonna call it Samsung Mongoose Monitor. So first we have the calibrate, which is on this base, I have to pull this down, show that white, because that white's gonna be uh, what it uses to calibrate. And I'm just gonna put it down like so and calibrate it. So we're waiting, waiting, waiting. So what it says to do is grab this thing, put this in there. You're gonna have a notch there where this goes into, like this. All right, it's in. We are going to hang it up here, just like that, and put it in the middle, and then I'm just gonna press next. So it wants me to adjust my contrast control in the direction indicated, which means I need to uh, bring the contrast down. So I'm gonna do that on the monitor. So I'm gonna bring the contrast down and I'm waiting on a green check mark to come out there. Perfect. The perfect contrast is 61. Adjust brightness or backlight control until measurement luminance. So I wanna reduce it little by little until I get the green check mark. So we're at the right brightness now. It's gonna go through a whole bunch of colors, scan it. So through the power of editing, we're gonna speed that up. All right, so we are now at color number 76 of 118. We're gonna be done in a few minutes, probably two minutes or so. And once we're done, we're gonna, we're hopefully gonna see a difference between what it looked like before and after. And next, we're going to next um, we have light, default lighting V50, I guess, file name, mongoose, I profile. So what we're gonna have to do now is print that image, scan it, and do that maybe two or three times. Print, press, scan, print, press, scan. So as you can see here, they're coming out grayscale. Let me see what's happening there. Hi, Neil, my name is Gerald. I have a iPro, iPublish Pro 3 Plus, and I'm trying to calibrate my printer, which is a direct-to-film printer. We said check with CAD links. So I'm gonna do that right now. Uh, before I do that, I'm gonna open it up in Illustrator. It's, a, it's supposed to be a vector file, it's an EPS file. So I'm gonna open it up in Illustrator and see uh, if there's anything I can do there. All right, so two things that I've noticed here. Uh, I cannot open the EPS file with Illustrator, but I was able to open the TIFF file here. TIFF file, I don't know why, but it wasn't opening on CAD link, but this is what the TIFF file looks like here. And so I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try the TIFF file. So I'm going to download it uh, as TIFF using the largest chart of patches that I can get. It's like 1600 patches just to be the most accurate that we can be. So let's go back into the print room. All right, so I found a solution. I downloaded this PDF and I'm able to upload the PDF with colors on Adelaide, as you can see here. And it's just showing us 8.5 by 11 for some reason. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that, see if it works. Uh, so we're gonna rip that and we'll get back to you when we've got this printed. So this is what one of the swatches looks like. There were a total of six watches and the total number of patches. The different colored squares was 2033. We used up two white t-shirts for all the swatches and as always, we used Merch Studio Hot Peel DTF transfers. All right, we're good to go. Next, we set up a slide bar on each row of patches and just did the spectral photometer from one side to the other. You can go from left to right or right to left with an X right. And one of the things that makes this so much better than the NYX Mini 2 is that I don't have to stop for three seconds at every patch. As you can imagine, this took a little bit of time, but it was all worth it in the end. Like I said, we had to go through six watches with a total of 2,033 patches, but we got done in no time. Next thing we did was finish the ICC profile, creation process in iProfiler, then upload it to Cadlink as the overriding ICC. So it's now the next night and we weren't able to finish uh, everything yesterday because we got tired and when you're tired, you know, you gotta rest your brain so you can better. Let me show you what we have so far. First comparison, going back to the beginning, this is the oddly prints. There's a lot of contrast that's very light, uh, darkish blue, not very dark. Magentas are good. You have that blue there as well. And if you compare that with a mongoose, this was the mongoose original setting right here. So as you can see, the blues are darker. The magenta is good, the reds are good, but the blues are really way off. 
Uh, we went through that RIP software, I mean the ICC profile. This was the first version of that that came out. As you can see here, again, I'm gonna compare that with the Oddly. This is the Mongoose 2 after we made the RIP and that's the Oddly right there. And the Cyan, the blues look like this in the Mongoose and the reds look like this, so lighter for sure. And the Oddly, it looks like this. But, you know, we made a couple of adjustments to uh, cab length, you know, different percentages of ink. Using the same IC, custom ICC profile, we played around with the settings and really there's not much of a difference between them. I'd say, I'd say we're about at 90%. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, but I think we're at about 90, 95%. One thing that's different though here, so the gold here is lighter than the gold here, which is, uh, this was more accurate to be honest with you. This is uh, more like the original image. Uh, this was from the Oddly, so it's lighter there. So definitely need to uh, do a few more tweaks, but I think we're doing okay. That is our first experience with the x right iPublish Pro 3 Plus. Let us know what you think. Let's make t-shirts.